Okay. So <clears throat> when the product demo is done, it takes about like 10 days, one week, all modules are actually shown with baseline, uh, uh, a baseline uh, um, functionality of the modules, which includes results, reports, integration, real-time data, okay? And then the migration plan is discussed how data loss will be mitigated, how data will be transferred, okay? How and how much time is required for migration, for data cleansing, for data formatting, uh, data synchronization and formats of data transfer, whether it will be uh, whether it will be sequential or non-sequential or in parallel, everything will be everything actually is then played out because some modules uh, will require data like master data, transactional data. Uh, integration data to be set before migration is done. Some there that will be prerequisite. Okay. And project managers, directors, owners are basically highlighted and assigned. And of course, nominated for that purpose. Then when the kickoff actually is uh, 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 it, it is actually started after the project is awarded. Okay. Then after the kickoff, uh, of course, before the kickoff, there is a pre-kickoff meeting, which actually is to uh, plan out the duration, the phases, um, segments of the project, okay, working days, and uh, plan to implement, configure, train, test the system, the landscape, okay? The landscape, this is all decided. Of course, it can, it can change with time as there is, there can be changing requirement, but uh, days, months, weeks, months are decided. They are locked through um, project management tools and charts. And this is always tentative because certainty is not certain in projects. Okay. So once it kicks off, it's a formal initiation start of the project, a formal phase, after which the kickoff, the teams actually meet for a zero day training where SAP overview for all modules is given to power users and end users and uh, teams are aligned for all the departments, which means that every department will have, will have a power user, end user, and all of these users will be formally made into a team. Those teams will be decided and the planning uh, for training will be laid out. After the overview, of course, the requirement gathering starts. That is basically nothing but sort of interviews, surveys, um, questionnaires, and discussions, uh, exchange of charts, um, documentation, documentation of the clients 
blueprint of requirements and processes that are basically uh, running in the organization. The requirement gathering actually lists all the requirements, all requirements, and all the requirements are graded as most important, urgent, um, most important, urgent, important, normal, not so normal, avoidable, and um, to be discontinued processes, okay? Because some processes will take too much time that have to be replaced. And then those processes are graded with the use of discussion again, discussion and uh, through charts. And that chart is basically shared with the client so that we can know what kind of uh, processes, because we have to sh shortlist all the process. So there is no set format when it comes to requirement gathering, no set format, okay? Consultants basically, they have a four vision to gather all these requirements, okay? A four vision or a foresight so that maximum processes are captured. So processing in process, in, in requirement gathering process, get, uh, requirement gathering, all these things are basically laid out, okay? And of course, when we speaking of MM, we want inventory controls, integrations, uh, inventory movement processes, um, inventory consumption process, inventory quality grading process, storage, um, inter-storage movement, plant to plant movement, plant to storage movement, okay, exit plant, exit plant movement, GRN process, because the every process can have multiple levels. So consultant is basically an expert to foresee the depth of these processes and then advise, advise appropriate SAP process, business process, okay? So after this, of course, when every requirement is collected, then comes in the blueprint documentation. Blueprint documentation, it has two parts, as is to be, as is, is all the requirement gathering, uh, uh, requirement gathering phase where the process is listed, listed processes as to what is happening right now, okay? So it comes in the form of charts, um, notes, explanations, um, drawings like, um, uh, what do you call that drawings, that chart name? drawings? Uh, I'm missing that name. DD, uh, I just can't remember that. Anyways, drawings of the process, uh, the hierarchies, users using and influencing um, influencing the process, process leaders, 
इनपुट आउटपुट इनपुट आउटपुट एंड वॉट एल्स इनपुट आउटपुट रिपोर्ट्स रिपोर्ट्स रिजल्ट सेट एंड इन एज इज दिस इज वॉट इज कलेक्टेड अबाउट द प्रोसेस इन टू बी ऑफकोर्स यू हैव टू मैप इट मैपिंग SAP process because there is one legacy versus SAP process because there is every process in SAP okay uh and those have to be matched or upgraded or discounted because some process will be matched some Will require upgradation, and some will be discontinued, discounted. Okay, so to be can be simpler or complex based on the requirement and the discussion and interview. Simpler and complex collection of all these process collection and comparison is done. comparison is done from process to process it's one to one okay one to one so one to one is then enlisted in the document in to be process okay with reference to the old process okay and after this is done the to be process then comes in the gap analysis because some process basically some processes are uh, some processes are uh, not usable okay and some processes are complex but essential some process are not supported by sap so some processes are not supported by sap for that customization is required customization uh, is done through a bar okay that is gap analysis so we list list all those processes which are out of the scope of sap okay so once this is done the gap analysis of course all the complex processes are then listed out and the possible possible solution is also drafted in gap analysis after this three parts are three parts are done as is to be and gap analysis gap analysis this becomes this collection of three parts becomes blueprint document this is the most important document okay and it contains all this okay contains all this blueprint document is made and after the blueprint document is is submitted with the client with the cto owner uh bpo they actually sit down and review it word by word and approval or change request or 
uh, rejection is basically is ba basically uh, the responsibility of these client uh, 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 client and management. Okay, approval, change request, rejection. After that, after the approval, realization starts. Realization is but configuration. In configuration, you have three landscapes. Three landscapes are dev, QA, production. And every dev will have uh, golden client, which is only for configuration. And uh, it will also have a testing landscape. And the other will be development. Development. That is for ABAP. Okay. So golden client is just for configuration. No transaction is here. In testing, we have configuration plus configuration plus um, transaction. Okay. We test with the, con the configuration with transactions and the development is purely with ABAP. Okay. And when the testing is good, the configuration is moved uh, from golden client transport request that we make transport request is generated and from development ABAP transport is generated and it is transferred to QA. QA will also have Golden client, testing, and development. Configuration cannot be done in QA, but golden client will actually maintain configuration. So golden client, it holds the configuration. Testing is for users, VPOs, and for UAT. Okay, and development, of course, has the code for customization. And then we have production, which only has one landscape, that is live landscape. But before production, we have pre-production server for reconciliation, okay, of data, master data, logs, transactions, values, entries, everything, okay? This is a part of the process. Pre-production, of course, pre-go-live is used for reconciliation. So, Uh, this is how SAP landscape is laid out. After the client reconciles the data, and the data is for FI, MM, assets, vendors, customers, purchase records, purchasing inventory, master data and everything is reconciled. So it's a long process. It takes like 10 days, 15 days. After that, the go live date is fixed. And, and before the go live date is fixed, pre-production data transfer is made ready to be transferred to PRD. Okay. And after the go live, it's not data, it's date. It's fixed. It's made ready 
to PRD. PRD migration when done and the go live date is near, there's a blackout phase. Blackout phase. Operations are halted. Okay. And production uh, backlogs are generated. More backlogs means more documents will be generated and that will have to be completed within one month or 10 days or whatever. Okay, one month or two months, that depends. Okay. After that, of course, support starts. So two weeks of go live are very critical for SAP projects. And that's how you complete a work. Okay.